Welcome back. You know, one thing Bear fans will find out as they get to know first-round draft choice Curtis Enos is he might be polite to a fault. Everybody is Mr. or Mrs. to Curtis, who also refers to himself quite often in the third person. Curtis Enos is hardworking, devout, and pleasant, except when he's trying to beat your brains in on the football field. And on that football field, Enos always has worn number 39, and that will continue with the Bears. We happen to have a uh, very familiar number available for Curtis, number 39, which of course he wore at Penn State. With my strong belief in, in Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ was administrated 39 um, whips across his back when he was persecuted. And, uh, and also it was um, significant of the number of touchdowns I scored my senior year in high school. And uh, within my gut and my heart, I believe 39 really represented me as a, as a person and as a football player. I enjoy what I do. I love it. I mean, uh, you know, when I'm having an opportunity to play a sport that I love to play, I try to make the most out of it and prepare myself as best I can. I really feel that Chicago would be a good fit for Curtis Newman. There's a lot of opportunities for me to, to not only be a good football player, but to be a, a positive role model in this um, in this city. I can't wait to get back out there and start taking handoffs from uh, Mr. Kramer and, and, and just getting the ball in my hands to start doing some things. And I'm just really excited just to, to be able just to get back here uh, on Thursday and uh, get ready to get into mini camp and, you know, just have some fun. Well, it would be nice to have some fun. Uh, you know, Hub Arkush, or I should say Mr. Arkush, <laughs> it's really kind of refreshing to see a kid like this who's just... Uh, He's like, he, he's beyond Chris Zorich almost when it comes to being polite. Tim, I was sitting in the room when you made that comment. I saw Dave over on one side, Mark over on the other side, and it was Mr. Kramer. And, and we couldn't pass and ask him if it's going to be, you know, Mr. Salon, Mr. Bennett until he beats them out. <laughs> you, you, know, you know what's amazing? There's a little tradition around the NFL camps that the number one draft pick is the guy that takes most of the uh, abuse and the initiation to training camp, as we know. Uh, you know, our vets are going to be disappointed in Curtis. This is going to be too easy. You know what I mean? I mean gotta, he's got to pull a Todd Sarbrum and resist him where they shave his head or tape him to a goalpost or something. I mean, this guy's uh, going to be too easy. <laughs> Tim, we welcome in Mark Hatley now as well. And, of course, Mark has worked long and hard this weekend along with the rest of the group. And, and Mark, maybe just first uh, brief observations. What really stood out about Curtis Enos for you? I think it was his running style. He... Um he could pick out any film, and he dominated at uh, the line of scrimmage. He broke tackles. He made people miss. Um, he ran over, around them, and, and threw them, and caught the ball good. It was just a complete back that weighed uh, 250 pounds. Mm -hmm. You know, we're taking a look at him now, and I guess the other question, of course, we had heard a lot about the attempts, the desire to trade down. We know you enjoy that part of drafting. Uh, it didn't happen. How close were you? I mean, was there a point where you said maybe we're going to have to pass on Enos and, and that you had a deal close? We were real close on uh, probably Jacksonville, and um, there was a couple of things that we just couldn't get worked out. Um, we came close, but uh, I'm glad it turned out the way that it did. Dave, what were your thoughts? I mean, you'd seen Curtis, you'd been through all the meetings. And, uh, were you hoping, no, let's stay and get this kid in here, or were you interested in the deal, too? Well, we, we knew it would help our football team. But on the other hand, uh, you know, we had stayed up late uh, the night before, and we had everything mapped out for all the trade possibilities. But, you know, like, like Mark said, I mean, we, we weren't going to give in and, and give up a great football player, give up the fifth pick in the draft to move down just to do it. And if, if somebody would have come up and... Uh, uh, you know, offered us what uh, what the price was, and uh, then we would have crossed that bridge. But it didn't happen, and everything has worked out perfect. Tim, I don't want to dominate Mark and Dave. I know you've probably got some questions for Mark. Well, I do. Uh, Mark, it, mu it must have been quite an experience, your first draft. Uh, and I guess uh, some of the other guys in your fraternity tested you, and uh, you have to feel good about the way things came out as far as you were concerned. Well, we, we anticipated it a little bit. Um, my f our first draft... Uh, we thought probably we, when we went on the clock, um, we would get a lot of calls and it would be a pressure situation. And um, we had it timed out and it worked just about like we thought. And uh, we came close, but uh, it worked out perfect. We're tickled with Curtis. All right, well, Mark and Dave and Hub sit on tight because uh, we're going to take a quick time out. But when we come back, a closer look at the other players the Bears drafted this weekend, plus nine free agents signed this evening. Bears hope a couple of these rookies are going to start next season. That includes second-round safety Tony Parrish. We'll look at that after this. 
all checking accounts are not alike. At St. Paul Federal Bank, you also get a Money Connection ATM card, so you're always connected to your money. Bank free at St. Paul's network of over 450 automated teller machines throughout Chicagoland. For total convenience, seven days a week, or bank by phone. And now, another reason to connect with St. Paul Federal. Chicago Bears checking. Call 1-800-321-BANK. Because with St. Paul, you're always connected to your money. Sometimes you just gotta have meat. So when we go for it, we're like barking dogs. We get the New York strips. It's Angus. It's certified Angus. You can't get anywhere else with dominance. And it tastes better. You know it's gonna be tender and, and, uh, and juicy. It's just the best tasting meat around. I don't even want to cut the cellophane off. I just eat it. I'm drooling just thinking about it. Certified Angus beef, plus aisles of fresh values. Only at Dominic's, for people who know their food. This is why I'm not a vegetarian. Welcome to a sport coupe with a whole new attitude. Ford ZX2, with more equipment than ever before. Dual airbags, cassette, and air for starters. And now a sport package with fog lamp, spoiler, and alloy wheels at no extra charge. Add it up and it's less money than Cavalier. $21.55 less. Now get $1.9 for $36, $2.9 for $48, or $1,000 cash back. Ford ZX2, new attitude, more equipment, less money. Drive it at your neighborhood Ford dealer today. Welcome back. Much has been made of the Bears' recent draft failures, except really, the record isn't that awful. 1993 brought Curtis Conway, Carl Simpson, Todd Perry. Not bad. Just two years ago, the Bears got Wal Harris, Bobby Ingram, Paul Grassmanis, Chris Valerio, Michael Hicks. A pretty decent crop. Arguably the best Bear draft of all, way back in 1983. Jimbo Covert, Willie Galt, Mike Richardson, Dave Dewarson, Tom Thayer, and then down in the eighth round, Richard Dent and Mark Bortz. Obviously, Hub, if you can get somebody like Richard Dent in the eighth round, you've got a great draft. And I, I would have the feeling that maybe Dave and Mark think that they've picked up gems like this in the later rounds. At least certainly hoping so. Tim, I wasn't even coaching in 1983. <laughs> I know you weren't, but, but those are names we all remember. You know, Tim, I know that they're very pleased with the draft, uh, both in terms of depth as well as what they got at the top. And in particular, uh, the number two pick, Tony Parrish, is a kid that they had rated very highly and were delighted to get in the second round. Well, let's talk about him a little bit, Dave and Mark, uh, because uh, we're going to take some video of him, too. Uh, this is a really, now you talk about uh, filling a need. You obviously needed help in the secondary, and this kid could maybe start for you this year. Well, we hope so, and that's why we drafted him, obviously. But, uh, you know, with the departure of uh, Mark Carrier two years ago, and it didn't work out with Anthony Marshall, uh, you know, Johnny Mangum did a good job last year of, of filling in, but, but it was a need, as you say, and uh, we're real happy to have Tony. I mean, he's been a real productive player there. Mark can talk a little bit more about, about his abilities and stuff. Mark, we've heard that he likes to come up and stick in. He's a pretty good man-to-man -man cover guy for safety as well. He's, yeah, he's got good ball skills and he's, he covers a lot of range back there. Um, we had this formula. Rick's got a formula and Bill, and Bill said safety's going to be there. So it got a little tense because I think uh, Chavis went first and then, then Parrish was the last one and it was... Uh, it was exciting, and, and Tony's a heck of a player, and we were tickled to be able to get him. Well, at each round, it appears, Tim, that they got the guy that they wanted with a higher grade than some people that went in front of him, and, of course, Olin Krutz comes up in the third round. Well, uh, that's somebody, uh, they're, again, a need, uh, Dave and Mark, because uh, you have a little hole in that line. You think that Krutz has got the ability to actually come in and start as a, as a rookie? Well, you know, when we drafted Chris Valero, obviously, we, had, you know, we lost Jerry Fontenot to free agency. Chris played center last year for the first time ever. Uh, Chris could play center tomorrow if he had to. We signed Casey Wegman as the season went on, but, but we really uh, wanted to try to get Chris back at guard if we possibly could. And, and Owen was the highest rated center that, uh, that our scouts had on the board. And, and again, just to be very honest with you, you know, we, we never thought he'd be there in the third round. And uh, so we felt real fortunate to get him. And, and he's all jacked up and coming in. And uh, so, so he'll fit a need for us. Plus, we're getting a real quality player. And it gives us a chance to really solidify that offensive line, which, which we haven't done a very good job of the last few years. Yeah. And Mark, I'm sorry, Tim. Well, I'm just going to probably, I'm going where you're going, Hub, with the fourth round pick. Now, this was a big surprise. Projected the first round pick, Alonzo Mays. Uh, he, I guess, experimented with uh, marijuana before the combine. And uh, so he fell down to the fourth. And Mark, I, I guess, having been satisfied that the character problem is not an issue, this is a terrific football player. Yeah. We had him rated as the number one tied in. And, uh, uh, he did. He just does some excellent things catching the ball, 
and uh, we just felt like we couldn't pass on him at the time. Um, he was heading above all the other players that were on the board. And you, of course, uh, you, you've met with them, and, uh, and you're convinced that there's, there's no lingering problem here with, uh, with what happened? Yeah, we felt like we could manage him. We talked to everybody that we could, and we felt good about the situation. All right, Hub, let's go down through the rest of the draft. Uh, we start in the sixth round with, uh, <laughs> ironically, Chris draft. Uh, uh, Dave, what do you know about him, the linebacker from Stanford? Well, he, he was a player that, that we had come in and visit with us this year. And what, what we did, which was really a good idea, we brought in about 15 players, and, and, and Mark and Bill just kind of selected guys that, that we might have a possibility, uh, a chance of drafting. This guy's a, a linebacker that can run. He's smart. He's played inside. He's played outside. He's been a real good special teams player. So, uh, you know, he's got a real good chance, you know, obviously with uh, the linebacker situation as it is, to come in and make our football team. Mark, Pat Manley, uh, offensive tackle, but a deep snapper, really the reason you went out and got him, huh? Yeah, Pat's was uh, the best snapper in the, in the draft, and uh, we had heard, we had stayed in contact with, with him for the um, um, part of the draft, and four or five teams had called him, and so we, we took him in the sixth, and we feel like he'll be a stamper for the next ten years, we hope. Now, you signed, uh, Mark, I don't know, I think it was nine or ten free agents. Uh, any particular name in that group that stands out? I mean, maybe it's not fair to single anybody out, but is there somebody you're particularly excited about in that bunch? Uh, the defensive lineman from Arkansas, the Anderson kid, sort of jumped out at us. We talked about drafting him, and uh, he, a lot of clubs were after him, and it, it worked out good for us. All right, well, uh, so there's lots of stuff that's going to be percolating uh, from now and through... Uh, the mini camp and then on to camp up in Platteville, but there's lots more percolating on this show too. Still ahead, our special edition of the Dave Wanstead Show. We will look at some of the players the Bears didn't take, including a Randy wide receiver named Moss who went to the Vikings when 20 teams decided to pass him up. A look around the draft selections for the rest of the NFC Central right around the corner. Ford dealer is on a roll because great rates on 98s are back and better than ever with low 1-9 financing on seven popular Fords. CX2, Escort, Contour, Taurus, Windstar, Explorer, or Ranger and get the best financing offer of the year. Low 1-9 financing for up to 36 months or choose a longer term and get 2-9 for 48 months or great cash back on select models. Great rates on 98s, seven great Fords, one great deal at your neighborhood Ford dealer today. They've hit a bowling alley video store. Now here. There's one of them. He's moving. Oh, he's good. He's very good. That's it. Let's grab him. Did you pay for this wiener, son? Not exactly. Uh, Lieutenant, this might explain things. Watch yourself. It's a Coca-Cola card. No tell her what you'll get away with. To Caesar. Julius, the Senate wants you killed. Look out for Brutus. For the most reliable digital network, get Cellular One. We've led the way in wireless phone service from the start. But just think if we'd gotten it to you sooner. Sign up soon and get free local weekend calling all the time. Free is good. Golf's not hard with Tiger Woods and here's new TW. A common problem in golf is the slice. One solution is to play with the gallery. Having women and children to my left and right is a handy reminder that I need to keep my club face square. Now let's see how this tip works for Joe, a 27 handicapper from Logansport. Go get him, Joe. Joe overcompensated for his slice and hooked it. Something we'll be sure to work on next time. And welcome back to the special edition of the Dave Wanstead Show. We've talked all night about the players the Bears selected in this year's draft, but were the Bears able to keep up with the Joneses or the Holmgrens or the Greens or the Dungies? Well, maybe. What about the other clubs, though, in the Bears division? Hub, uh, this is a very tough division, as we know, and it seems like everybody drafted pretty well, don't you think? It really does, Tim, and we wanted to bring in someone else in addition to Dave and Mark who would know, and so we've got the Bears' director of college scouting, Bill Reese, joining us. And, uh, 
Bill, you got a good look at all the kids besides the ones you took today, and we're going to start up in Green Bay where Ron Wolf made a move. He felt he had to trade up 10 spots, and his first pick was Bonnie Holiday. Anything that sticks out about this kid from North Carolina? Well, I, I think he was the best inside player available. Um, I think when Green Bay moved, they were looking to uh, take either Bonnie Holiday or Sean Williams from mm -hmm. UCLA, and I think they were surprised that uh, Bo uh, Bonnie Holiday was there. Mark, they stayed on the defensive line. Jonathan Brown, kid from Tennessee that I hadn't heard much about before the draft. We felt good about him. He's a good athlete, and he's got good foot quickness. He didn't play all the time at Tennessee, but he was a good athlete that can, that can rush the passer. Tim, the Minnesota Vikings and the player that it seemed everybody wanted to talk about, uh, he ends up a Viking, Randy Moss. Well, yeah, actually, uh, that, that, of course, gives them another weapon in that arsenal, but there were questions, obviously, that everybody had about Randy Moss as to whether or not they could rely on him. And, uh, Mark, it, it can't be an accident that the kid fell down as low as he did. I think everybody seemed to feel the same way until uh, the Vikings took him. Well, he was very talented. You just had to have a feeling when you could manage him and uh, where you could take him at because of the uh, personal problems that he had had. Bill, defensive end Kaylee Wong, defensive back Ramos McDonald, uh, kids that you had good grades on? Uh, we did. Kaylee Wong is an excellent athlete, and he's a guy that can really... Um, uh, rush the passer and Ramos McDonald uh, is a cover corner that can be very physical. Tim, I think the Detroit Lions did as much uh, in free agency and really through trades before even coming into the draft and they set up that they just uh, really could get best available athlete. Well, if you look at their list, it is impressive. Uh, Terry Fair, of course, uh, is something that maybe Mark, you and uh, Bill would, would kind of like. Obviously, you'd like a talented corner, but you'd also like somebody to return kicks, too. Uh, that's the need I assume you're going to be addressing pretty soon. Right. We're looking at it. Terry's a real talented bump-and-run corner, uh, and he has good punt, punt and kickoff return skills, too. And Jermaine Kroll, Bill, is a lot like Herman Moore. He comes from the same school, same pedigree. A big, strong receiver that can uh, go over the middle and has good uh, running skills after the catch. I wish the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, maybe the youngest team in the division, didn't get the kid I like the best. Jack has green. I, I know he's too small, guys, but he's a great player. Uh, we had him rated high. He's, uh, he's got big playability. Uh, Tampa Bay's got him some speed in the last couple of receivers they picked up. The kid from Atlanta and then this kid, they, uh, they've helped themselves. And Brian Kelly and Jamie Duncan, Bill? Uh, Brian Kelly is also a big cover corner. He has good speed and good ball skills and uh, uh, has played safety, so he's a good tackler. And Jamie Duncan was a guy that we had our eye on, and uh, uh, Tampa was uh, able to get him in the third round. Well, Tim, it's a good thing the Bears got better this weekend because it looks like the rest of the NFC Central did, too. I think that's true. And now, uh, Bill and Mark, what goes on for you guys? Obviously, your work is far from over. I mean, the draft is the big chunk of your workload. But now what, what's the next step for you guys in building the team for next year? Well, the, um, obviously, we'll evaluate what we've got in the draft and what we signed in the, in the unrestricted free agent market and then see what we've got available of the college kids and then wait for the June 1st or we probably will get a couple of things done between now and June 1st on a couple of linebackers out there that we feel good about in the unrestricted market. So it's safe to say no golf vacations coming up for you guys. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you used to have a lot more time when I was coaching than in personnel. <laughs> well, we've got more time coming up too on our special edition of the Dave Wanstead Draft Show here on Sports Tonight. When we come back, some final thoughts from everybody right after this. Bears Draft Special 98, brought to you in part by your neighborhood Ford dealer. Successful small businesses think big, as in big growth. Exactly what you'll find at the Midwest's biggest small business expo, April 23rd and 24th at Navy Pier. Brought to you by Chicagoland's biggest chamber organization. It's a huge chance to get your product or service in front of other businesses. Attend information-rich seminars. And make new contacts at Chicagoland's largest networking event. The Small Business Expo is sponsored in part by the Illinois Department of Commerce and Community Affairs. Organize tools with portable products from Menard. This job boss fits a five-gallon bucket for a handy tool carrier, just $7.96. This soft-sided bag is now $14.88, and don't pay till next year. Tackle yard projects with true temper wheelbarrows. This four-cubic-foot model is $19.99. A five-cubic-foot is $27.99. Don't pay till next year during project days at Menards. It ends soon. Save big money at Menards. 
Just a little touch of a heartfelt love song. Make it in the key of a romance gone wrong. Mix it with a heart that has waited too long. Southwest is flying into Nashville. If it has a groove, we can two-step honey. We can rock and roll till it ain't even funny. If it's kind of blue, we can still save money. Southwest is flying into Nashville. Sing another train song. Make another pain song. Everybody sing along. Fly Southwest to Nashville for a song. And welcome back to the Dave Wanstead Show Hub. Uh, you know, it's funny, uh, obviously last season was disappointing, but uh, it's so easy to be optimistic after you get through with the draft, but it, it kind of feels good, and uh, the expectations are there, and it looks like the Bears improve themselves a lot for next year. You know, Tim, one of the things that I think I've heard Mark Hatley say, and let me ask you, Mark, that it, it's really not a 4-12 and football team. You've got a lot of work to do, but if you stay a little healthy and some of your young people taking their step forward, plus the draft today, it shouldn't take three, four, five years to rebuild this thing. No, it shouldn't have. We feel good about what we got done today, and we stay healthy next year. The kids we've added already through the unrestricted part of it and the people that we're going to add in the next month or so to go along with our draft picks, we ought to be a very competitive football team next year. Now, Bill, you've got a feel for pretty much everybody. You scouted them all today. Is this going to be a good draft in comparison to the last couple of years, about the same, maybe not quite as strong? Well, I think it will be. I think uh, uh, in the long run, uh, the class of 99 will be um, judged by the quarterbacks that come out, and they're going to be four or five top quarterbacks uh, a year from now. All right, we want to toss it back to Tim, and uh, boy, it's been a full weekend, Tim. <laughs> yeah, it has, huh? but uh, it looks like a productive one. Thanks to all you guys for being with us. Had some fun tonight. We'll look forward to seeing you lots uh, on through minicamp and then up in Platteville. Thanks a lot. Anyway, that's our special draft day edition of the Dave Wanstead Show on Sports Tonight. Howard and I will be back next week at 1030 with our regular Sports Tonight show as the Bulls tip off the playoffs this week against the New Jersey Nets. Until then, have a great week for producers Steve Goldberg and Phil Wolf, cameramen Chuck Davidson and Bob Kent, and of course, the coach Dave Wanstead and the staff up at Hallis Hall, and everyone here at News to Chicago. Thanks for spending part of your Sunday night with us. We won't forget it.